a mi o so a mi to o a mi to o a mi o so a mi o so a mi to o 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 so this uh, week we're continuing what we have been doing and i have managed to clean up translations uh for the part six um this question of the shamelessness i decided to go with this term because the original chinese meaning in um this section is gang qiang zi e. in the word gang qiang in literal sense means very stubborn very um brazen uh brash it's used to describe um something that is very hard to very un, uh, how to say un, unable to change uh, despite many um attempts to advise or help or guide um and if we extrapolate this meaning into the context of the, what this treaty is trying to achieve uh, trying to explain um this is one of the transgression means that no matter how many um, errors in the ways of you know treating people in the ways of you know conducting oneself one does not change uh, that means it's lack of awareness lack of um a healthy amount of self awareness hence shameless uh, because in this context shamelessness is applied in a way where people do not have any regards for other people regards for the uh, society and they just do it because they can very uh, short-sighted kind of uh, outlook and you will understand why this was used as the title of this section as you read through the quotes uh, as we go down so last week we had talked about the first sentence in detail and um <clears throat> it's you know uh, abuse of use of power authority and wealth we talk about how people need to have a sense of shame which directly links to the part six chapter and insult and bully others in the hope of personal victory and gain so i'm not going to dwell too long on this part but i'm just going to clean up my um the points and especially the one i heard from master ching kong uh this part means that um the first half means abused whatever the um influence you have and why why would people want to um abuse uh, instead of use it properly and why would people want to insult and bully and who are they insulting and bully in this context in this context it can be applied to people who are very um well higher than you or same social status or same ranking same hierarchy level as you are in an organization say your colleagues or your boss and and um the motivation usually is to get one up over other people for the sake of you know appearing more authoritative more powerful you know you own that person that kind of a mindset of course this is not gonna last because we all know that people who have this kind of tendency are dictators or egoistic maniacs and the ending of egoistic maniac is either sad destructive or being ignored or you know if they are engaging in criminal enterprise they will lose their life easily and you can see in histories and in um you know in history in countless times people who has um lacking any sense of uh, self-reflection and combine this with power with authority uh, it becomes uh, a huge tragedy not just for themselves but for people around them and mostly their ending is either being betrayed backstabbed by their own people or you know when they are 
you know, luck or when their authority runs out. I mean, that means there's no reason to support this person anymore. You know, they will get ousted out of the position very quickly because there's nothing else in there other than pure power play. You know, there's nothing, nothing um, good, nothing worthy to protect of this kind of person. Hence, um, this is only harming the person who's doing this uh, transgression. So basically, that's the summary I have extracted from uh, the talk from Master Ching Kong on this one. Most people, you know, go along with this kind of power play because uh, maybe you're in a position of power and you might affect their future and going against you might not be wise at the time. So it would be wise to just appear as, you know, oh yeah, 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 yeah you are, you know, way more uh, powerful, more glorious than the person next to you or you're more smart or you're more uh, eloquent than other people. But this kind of people usually cannot hold on to this kind of um, position for too long because they will uh, inevitably, as I mentioned, cause their own downfall due to their egos, due to their inability to reflect and to listen, to change, to actually contribute to the organization. And when time has come for them to get out of the seat, they will very quickly be replaced. So to be a real person uh, worthy of respect, worthy of you know, authority, worthy of um, awe, inspiration. Um, it's not to seek this kind of thing, it's, um, it's to be a decent human, you know, how to be a decent person, person who actually know how to be a person, to be a decent people, uh, taking care of your own you know, duty, taking care of yourself, taking care of your words, taking care of your actions. Be fully aware of people's needs as well as your conducts. Be fully, um, how to say, in tune with the organization, in rhythm with other people. Uh, and most of the time, you will see people who are very successful and able to hold on to their success. There are many successful people, but they only last for like a few years, one, two years. They are not considered successful. They consider luck. To be really successful, that means you're able to hold on to the top for a long time and even beyond your lifetime, your legacy that continues for generations. That needs to have something deeper than simply rich in born in the right place, you know, um, uh, met the right people. That's only condition, they are not cause. We're talking about cause and effect here, right? Cause, condition, effect, seed, water, sunlight, and then fruit. And these are only just, they are just conditions. They are not the cause of your success. To be truly successful means that you, your legacy continues, even though you pass away, you step down, people still you know, um, uh, learn a lot from you. Um, no, look no further than Buddha, no further than Master Ching Pong, no further than um, George Washington, no further than um, those people who really know, um, you know, they are, they are mostly humble people. They are not egoistical. They understand, you know, when it's time for them to use their power and authority and wealth to do the good deeds, they use it fully. And when it's time to step down, they step down and they step down graciously. They get out of the way, they allow the next generation to take over, they allow, they nurture them, but not interfering, right? And they don't insult, they respect, they, uh, how to say, even though that person might have a lot of errors, they find something good in them. They inspire that person to be more reflective of their approach. So this is the kind of person uh, that will inspire respect, hence authority. They don't ask for authority. People give them that. That's how it works, right? And this needs to be thought. Needs to be, this kind of example needs to be shared. Only then, um, you know, it will be a common sense. But you know, currently, it's not much of a common sense because it, there's a lot of lacking in this area in terms of education. People will only think about you know how much salary I gain, how much more um, power I can get in one day, you know how much more digits I can get. 
but you know, life is more than just digits. I mean, just enough to get by. Is, and then beyond that, you need to improve your own personal development, actual, you know, uh, character. Without characters, there is no connections, genuine connections. Without genuine connections, there's no long lasting bond. And without this long lasting bond, whatever business you're engaging in, including this temple and, and all this form of organization, family and etc., will not last. It will be just superficial. Once the money runs out, people goes away. That's why you can see a lot of uh, beautiful examples of, uh, you know, there is a case in South Korea where they encounter the um, financial crisis. And there is a lot of employee of the company. Obviously, the boss must be a really good person and they're willing to donate their um, salary, cut down salary by half, for basically loan to the company for a certain amount of time for them to get back in shape. And the boss was really touched and, you know, he hold on to that promise and hope of these people to carry on these wishes and, you know, grind every day trying to get back to normal. Once they get back to normal, he gives everyone, you know, 150% bonus to repay them. So this is how it works. Give and take. I mean, you give without asking for take and the take will be double in return. Uh, without going too far, um, we are talking about the opposite of this phrase. And um, let's continue. So, in summary, the um, ability to treat people uh, graciously, respectfully, with dignity is how one person should use their power and authority. And if they're in that kind of position, they have responsibility to lead, not just simply do the job. Uh, they have responsibility to inspire. To, to be a leader, not just a manager. Um, and this needs to have a proper, decent education and this kind of exposure to these stories. I will share a lot more uh, as we go on. Of course, another crops and orchards to fail, that means deprived of their livelihood. So because ancient times today, you mostly, uh, most people are farmers. Uh, not many people are working in the commercial a estate, they are farmers. So they're using this as an analogy of basically breaking up the livelihood, making them unable to survive. You know, um, <clears throat> this one, another transgression. The other one is to cause breakup of another marriage and engagement. So let's talk about one, one thing at a time. The first half of it talks about crops and orchards to fail. That means livelihood. Pretty straightforward. Um, it, it concerns of, you know, it's not just about, say, people's jobs, right? The most obvious thing is making people lose their job, causing people lose their job. Maybe you spread some rumors or unfounded stuff and causing them to be um, getting, you know, less. Uh, like they're supposed to be promoted because of some unfounded rumors or because of jealousy or stuff like that. And spread some rumors that, you know, harms that person's um, reputations, hence, deprive them, you know, the opportunity to be promoted. All right. And that is also one of the um, transgression mentioned here. Uh, or in the example of business as well, you you do something that, uh, how to say, sabotage their ability to function properly and hence deprive a lot of people of their earnings. Uh, those are another kind of uh, transgression that is included under this one, right? So anything that reduces their, how to say, their um, material uh, wealth is considered as causing another crop and orchards to fail because you cut off their, you know, you deprive them of, any, uh, of their livelihood. You um, uh, make them out of the job, right? So that's it. So the second half of it, to cause the breakup of another marriage or engagement. And this is pretty straightforward. It's, you know, becoming a, maybe a missus or um, of another people's uh, relationships or saying something that is, you know, spreading rumors that is harmful to people's uh, relationship. You know, it, it all includes under that. So now what we want to understand is what's beneath this kind of mi mindset. 
And I already mentioned there is jealousy involved. And why is jealousy involved? You know, maybe you're jealous of people's success, jealous of people's relationship. Uh, you're trying to get something without thinking of the consequences. So using a very unwholesome, unlawful means or unwholesome means. Sometimes it might not be, you know, not unlawful, but it's unwholesome. It's, it's to put it roughly, it's being a uh, pain in the uh, pain in the back. Uh, that kind of um, uh, mindset. How did that happen? You know, um, to know about this one, we need to start from what is the right way to get what you want, right? The first half is about maybe wealth, material comforts. You know, you want better better job, you want better promotions, you want, get, you want to get better than where you are now. Uh, is that the right way? Is stepping on other people's back to get what you want? You know, and is something that you get what you want using this kind of method, long lasting, you know, like basically selling your soul to the devil just to get, you know, a temporal enjoyment because everyone's going to die one day. But what they left behind is that ugly mess they did. So what does relationship? Is that how you get what uh, a happy happiness? Because people get in a relationship for happiness, right? Is that how you should do to get a, a happiness for yourself? Right? Is that going to be long lasting? Is that excitement going to last? Now, those things are out of uh, the mind most of the time because people are in adrenaline and the rush of get, chasing after it. Once they get it, it's gone. Right? So what is the right way to do it? So the right way to do it is you need to give before you think about take. You need to complete others before you think about having someone to complete yourself. All right? The first thing, the first foundation is to be, is to understand the rules. Same thing, cause and effect. Why is people born richer than me? Why is people getting better treatment than myself? Why is people this, this, this. Why am I this, this, this? All right. Understanding this will help you to, you know, get a bigger picture. You're able, you basically elevate it. You're basically no longer swayed by this. Um, in Chinese, huan de huan si. suddenly you get, suddenly you lost. That kind of mentality is not healthy to your heart. So first thing is you need to start from family. You know, be, be a person who, you know, um, you want your children to be in future or you want your next uh, student to be. Be respectful and loving to your family, your parents, your siblings. And then you move on to student, your friends, your mates. Uh, take care of them. Look after them. Um, take off, uh, you know, help them up uh, in studies, in their personal issues, stuff like that. So this, this is love, this is respect. And then once you have that, Understand the law of cause and effect. You know, if you want wealth, you need to practice the giving of wealth. There is no such thing as hand me down. Hand me down is just a, you know, way to help you out of your um, difficult situation. Once you get on track, you need to rely on yourself to be self-sufficient. So does cause and effect. You understand. You know, people might help you once twice, three times, but you can, they cannot help you forever. Um, people who do this kind of transgression, you know, uh, deprive people of their livelihood, breaking up other people's relationship, marriage, marriage, it's because they thought they can hook, you know, some boss, um, good graces, and try to get promotion quicker than other people. Little did they know, these are just conditions, and the cause is their past deeds, de deeds of giving wealth, so they actually did the good deeds in the past life and they have these conditions to get wealth in this life because they have cause, you have effect, you have condition, right? However, because of lacking access to this information, this kind of teaching, this kind of, you know, um, in, uh, uh, this kind of tales that gives you the, they teach you the right way to do it, the right way to ask for what you want. Hence, people use this kind of method. And, and it's very sad because they're supposed to get more wealth. And because of this kind of um, underhanded tactics, they lost. They're supposed to get 1 billion USD. Because of this underhanded tactics, they get 
100 million, which is still a lot, but they already deprived 90% of it, just to, so to speak. Or, you know, they're supposed to get a very uh, good, significant others in this life because of their, um, let's say, lack of self-control and lack of these teachings. They have no restraint and they engage in, uh, you know, extramarital affairs and they will not get someone better than they are. So to, to meet someone else, you know, and the other half, you need to be as worthy as the other half. You, know, you only get someone your own uh, as uh, same worth as your own because you only attract the kind of people uh, the way you are presented to others, the way you are. So you, you attract the same kind of people the person, uh, that are alike with you. I'm so sorry for my bad English. So <clears throat> the rules of this game is if your your personal decency, your um, character is not really that, uh, your integrity is not there, most likely you would not attract someone with high in credit in, in, in integrity, trustworthiness. Right? It's not about looks, it's not about all this, you know, flair. Those things, it's fun, it's, it's exciting, but those things are just conditions. What is the cause is your character, who you really are beneath all that. And what, where do you draw the line? And those people who has no line or their bottom line is really low, cause committing this kind of transgression means that they will attract another home wrecker into their own relationship. And their own relationship get wrecked by another home wrecker. If you understand what I mean. So does the career wise, you know, you, you do this kind of thing to other people in the career. Karma is in future, someone else will come after you and you might think he might be your prodigy. He might be, you know, she, he or she might be uh, someone, you know, you can trust uh, to watch your back. Little did they know, they backstab you the way you backstab other people. So the right way to doing it is find correct starting point. Doesn't care what other people get or not get. You know, those, everyone has their own karma. Everyone has created their own karma. The inequality of this world is because the, in, the different karma created. You cannot expect to get a hundred dollars melon, watermelon, without putting a hundred dollars worth of effort in it. It's just a matter of time. You know, you may have one life, two life, three lives. That's why you cannot see it. But people put in the effort in their past, hence they get the results that appears to you, oh, they get the result by, you know, say they're born into a rich family. Or, you know, they, you know, they have a lot of um, good networks, you know, without trying while you are working so hard just to get one seat, one position over there. It's because people has done all that hard work in the past and maybe multiplies three times, 10 times. And also there's an element of sincerity, genuine in your engagement. How sincere are you? Master Jingfu mentioned about Chen um, Jingxi. How real is that? Good deeds. If a good deed has a mix of selfishness, like what do I get out of this? You already diluted. If you li literally do it just to help other people, you know, to save people's lives, to to really you know assist them without thinking, oh, I want something in return. Then we can talk about real fortune, real merits. Otherwise, it's just transactional. That means what you get is exactly what you put in. It will not multiply. Right. The way you can multiply it is when you're actually not thinking about what you get in return and only focus on giving, focus on actually contributing. Understanding this law will help you to achieve that level. That's why Buddha and you know all the Bodhisattva or the skilled practitioners, they are very easy going. They don't worry about you know these people getting better than them or anything. They will always help you. You know, some even um, well, that, that's only when you reach that level. They're even happy to give up one of their arms, their legs to the animal so that they are not hungry, maybe to the tiger, to the lions, because they're no longer attached to the body, right? But back in our level, um, simply, sim simple, sim simple thing like, you know, getting promotion, getting better, um, how to say, standards of living means that you help other people better themselves as well. 
say, if you have a knowledge that other people does not have and they require it to do better at their job, help them. Don't ask for anything in return, just help them. All right? Asking for anything in return is very mechanical. Obviously, if your job involves business transaction, that's obvious. But if it's just simple, personal, person to person, human to human, just do it for the sake of doing it. For the, just do it because you really want to help them to get out of that. Uh, uh, to get out, I mean, to to get better at what they're doing. Just the joy of doing it. Law, of course, and in fact, will repay you by itself. You know, the longer it gets, the better it gets. If you get it immediately, that means that's all you get. If you wait, if you're able to be patient and you know go through all the waiting in the long run, you will get better in the long run. So does marriage. So does relationships. If you do not break up any uh, other people, but you complete other people, say you know trying to prevent a divorce from happening by you know helping. If you are in the right position to do that, uh, if you are the right person to do that, you know maybe you mutual friends or stuff like that. You're able to help each other to see their good points. You know. Um, in Chinese, 合适了. but at the same time, you need to have wisdom as well. You can't just do it um, uh, without understanding the context, right? Um, pretty much, yeah. Not just Buddhism. Like if you look in the world religions, and there is a saying in the Bible, they might say, God will only help those who are willing to help themselves. You know, there is an element of, you know, blessings, element of help from external factors, but that cannot be the cost of your success, cost of your um, improvements. The cost of improvement has to be yourself. You have to put in the work, you have to put in the effort. You know, sometimes it might not work, but you genuinely tried and you genuinely um, wish other people well. And even though it might not work, say maybe this marriage engagement, you do it in peaceful way, in a loving way. And maybe, you know, you, you don't wreck other people's, you know, image and stuff like that, even though you might have disagreements. That's one thing uh, of doing it right, right? Or, you know, um, in work as well, you might not get promotion now, you might get a lot of troubles, you might get a lot of hurdles. That's because in the past, there's a lot of leftover debts you need to pay. And if you can use this law of cause and effect uh, actively, it will help you to... Um, yourself on the right marker that means you're able to get into the process of actually improving yourself um, in long run uh, expanding beyond that you can be you know um, I don't think we should go anything beyond that yeah so so we'll, st we'll, we'll stick with this one so third one is to amass wealth with money that one has no right to but instead of changing to become modest and charitable becomes arrogant and decadent instead to avoid just persecution and punishment by luck or mercy, yet still refuse to change one's chambers or criminal ways. Okay, that's one way of looking at it. But going straight from Chinese, I'm um, translating straight from Chinese. Go fu er jiao go mian wu chi. In first half of the sentence, it, it means that go means uh, a little bit of wealth. Um, it's it's not like huge wealth like Bill Gates or anything. Like your standard of living suddenly improve a little bit, you know, slightly better. And just because it's slightly better, slightly, you know, more authority, slightly more wealthy, uh, this is another transgression. You started to spend lavishly or starting to be very arrogant, uh, become uh, more, um, how do you say, more careless in your conduct. You know, become more and more, um, yeah, arrogant. Mm. Second half means that um, go mian. In this case, is sing mian. So it can be used the the way um, the translation works. You know, just narrowly avoid making a mistake that will cost you, you know, your live, your job, your relationship, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you thought I can get away with this. Why not? I can do it again. You know, I should do it again because I still can get it away. In future, the other way is maybe you just met a opportunities, you know, in front of you, right? Uh, say you're in the position of taking care of wealth, taking care of um, you know people's 
bank account as a private banker or something, or you in the opportunity at in the government, uh, uh, that can you know at, at your own discretion you can use your own uh, the power that given to you to um, to do something that is might not might not be lawful, might not be decent, might be harmful to other people. Uh, maybe use uh, people's information for you know your own benefit. Um, those kind of opportunity presents before you, and people without shame, which is what this sentence trying to say, uh, people without shame, without sense of restraint, without uh, you know understanding of what is right and wrong, or they have understanding of right and wrong, but they ignore it, so they make use of advantage in a unjust. Uh, unlawful and unethical ways, right? Say people who are in charge of people's private data or in charge of people's wealth or in charge of a community's um, pool of wealth, pool of uh, personal data and stuff, and they use it to sell it to other people. That's a very obvious criminal act. Or um, people who are, um, you know, in that position where they will, you know, get promoted if they do something dodgy, or they get extra income when they do something dodgy, you know, something legally gray, uh, might not be illegal, but um, but it's harmful towards uh, towards the um, organization or communities, uh, especially lawyers. I can think about most easily is lawyers, doctors, uh, those people in you know high position. Respected by the communities in the profession, they are well respected. You know, doctors, lawyers, bankers, and they do something like you know legally gray and you know, trying to help people avoid persecution, help the help the people who are you know supposed to be punished to avoid it. Of course, I understand there is you know, the right to defend yourself and stuff like that. Uh, and if you do it right, you know you will let the fact comes out, but you know, this kind of thing is um, very great. And um, if you have an opportunity to earn a little bit more money by just doing this kind of job, this kind of career, uh, and you choose to do that, right? You can just not do that, right? You choose to do that. You choose to go into that kind of um, path just to get a little bit, uh, just to get more income, just to get more maybe authority, more reputations. Say charity, right? You have an opportunity to use charity to avoid paying more tax, and you might use this kind of methods to avoid paying tax to the government or to the community. That's part of this transgression, and you know, like some people can get away because it might not be illegal, or it might be legally sanctioned, you know. Legally sanctioned bribe, like lobbying and stuff like that. Um, the big, powerful corporation lobbying government against the public interest, the goods of the common, is second to in front of a big corporation, big money. Those are called go mian wu You know, it's not wrong legally, but it's unethical. It's harmful to this community. Uh, because maybe the product you push out might be harmful to the people who consume it, etc., etc. But you can just avoid it because technically you're not illegal. But people with any semblance of humanity inside or semblance of care, maybe if they can think about one of the members of the community that my product affects is my own children, is my own wife, is my own parents, then they will suddenly understand what they did is you know shameful you know like what if that's your daughter what if that's your children right and if everyone could think like that obviously it will be a much more tolerable world that we live in so as i brought up this point people with proper you know moral ethical education since they were young you know by their parents, by the communities. You know, as the idiom says, you know, it takes a village to raise a kid, not just a parent. Nowadays, it's small family, right? 
only you, only your parents, maybe your grandma. Everyone's focused only on you, you know, pouring everything on you, all the love, all the care on you, but not enough example of restraint, example of modesty. Obviously, not, it cannot apply to everyone, but this is the trend nowadays. And, you know, the result is, what is the product coming out of this? Um, <clears throat> lacking of uh, proper education, of restraint towards your own children. It's this person might came out in the society, might look, you know, all, you know, uh, reputable and stuff like that, but doing something uh, just because they want it. Why not? My parents, my grandparents would take care of my troubles anyway. Or maybe if you get into a you know, marriage with some rich and powerful guy, I can just get away with it because my husband would take care of my wreck, mess. Little did they know, cause and effect will come up and catch. Karma will come and catch up with these kind of people. And, un and they are very unfortunate products of negligence in this part of human education. Because we all focus on technical part, on money, on getting more and more zeros. We, fo we forget there is a decency, right? To be called human, you need to have decency. Otherwise, it becomes animal. And that part of education is lacking. Everyone focus on the superficial, on the, on the uh, fluke surface. Then what happens is without a well-founded character, if you go to a company, if you go to a organization and you're trying to say, I'm going to take care of your organization, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to um, carry this organization to the higher success. It's impossible because first thing is you only think only for yourself. You can't think anything beyond yourself. And even if you think beyond yourself, you only think about how can I get most out of it? rather than say, how do I contribute to this organization and actually help them uh, to be honest, uh, to be good. All right, long-term thinking is lacking in that kind of upbringing. So a very good education is a must. And that education has to start from young. Uh, as an example, people in the ancient times, they usually have that long um, immersion in this kind of mindset. It's very hard for us because it's very rare nowadays. We can't see people with, um, you know, that level of restraint, that level of, you know, humility, even though they are very, very, um, um, even they have a huge influence, huge amount of authority, but they, they don't use it. They don't appear as a person like that, right? Um, because they have immersion in that kind of environment where, uh, you know, the elderly and all that, they know how to restrain themselves. They know, you know, when to say, when not to say. They know uh, what is the priority, you know. And that priority has to be the priority of the community, not yourself. Not what you like, what you don't like. What you like, what you don't like has to be number two to the needs of the community. And that's how you become a leader of a community. You cannot say, I like this, I don't like this when you're in charge of an organization. You need to think about everything you say, everything you do, does it affect this organization, right? And that's, 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 that's how you make a good leader out of it. Um, so, example is Fan Zhongyan, you know, the um, Song Dynasty. I, I already mentioned that Mr. Fan, he has wealth, a lot of wealth. Back in the days, the salary is like a million per year, I think, USD equivalent. If you convert the, the, the money of that time, obviously it's a bit far-fetched because I don't have numbers. But the point is he has every single right to enjoy his wealth as the prime minister of the Song court. Uh, but he chose not to. He chose not to. He set up trust for his own family. And back then, family means 800 people, not just five, six. That means a relative, relative, relative. He set up trust for his family back to his birthplace and used that trust um, to build farms, to avoid, uh, to buy lands, to help distribute the farms, to build infrastructures and stuff like that for his own communities. Uh, 
um, obviously it affects everyone living in the area. And the standard of living he has is the same as the ordinary people. Even though he's a prime minister, Mr. Fan remains frugal. And uh, even his own children, you know, they, they live in a way that, you know, they barely get by. They just got three meals a day. That's it. They, they don't spend anything extra on themselves. That's how these people garner respect. And if they do it genuinely and, and without, you know, trying to mask it with their maybe political ambitions, that means they don't mask, they don't have um, unwholesome ambition beneath this benevolent act. They are genuinely helping people. And those people usually, uh, their legacy will be very long lasting. Their own children will be prospered. That is very fair, you know, because you influence a lot of generations of people. You, you benefited a whole community and their community, because of your example, they will also benefit their own family. Of course, your own generation, your own descendant will be uh, benefited as well. Same goes for Buddhism. Uh, the Buddha's um, teaching and his action, you know, he's very compassionate and he always, you know, uh, never force people, you know, even though people who are very rude, very rough, or maybe un, like this, shameless. And he's always being patient. He's always waiting for them to finish the insult. Uh, there are cases where people actually walk in front of him and insult and spit. The students were very angry, but Buddha was sitting there and say, you guys should be ashamed of yourself for being angry at him. He does not know the way, the Dharma. You all know the way. You all have learned from me 10 years, 20 years next to me, learning the ways of enlightenment. Yet, you are the one who get angry as that person who has never heard of the Dharma before. Immediately, the mood changes. Everyone becomes reflective and becomes set calm. They were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got caught up in that moment. Right. That's how, that's how a person without asking for authority, without asking for power, really be in that position. Because they, their character naturally exudes authority, exudes respect, exudes reverence. Because they always care about other people. They're always taking care um, of the, their communities, even though that person might be against them. So yeah. Another modern example before I open for our discussion is um, the modern example of these people who has, uh, you know, huge wealth but able to be modest is the Hong Kong action star Chow Yun Fat. He's very modest. Obviously, everyone has faults. We can't say that he's hundred percent, but we know. But as a rich people, as a very powerful and uh, how to say influential people, powerful influential people. His willing, his willingness to um, stay in a out of spotlight once he finishes his prime, you know, past his prime and um, and relatively good reputation, as well as his um, because he's been in industry for decades to maintain good reputation in a in this kind of entertainment industry is very rare. You know, a lot of people, you know, either get in, caught up in drugs, caught up in. Uh, scandals, sexual scandals, and stuff like that. Uh, he's relatively good, and uh, you know, have a, a good marriage, um, and also he's able to donate uh, about one thousand eighty mil million worth of Australian dollars <coughs> to different charities. And um, he also had met Master Jin Kong before as well, uh, under his teaching as well, and. And uh, yeah, that's how that's how it works, guys. Like, there's a reason why people are willing to. There's a saying: um, a person who can walk over thousands of prostration, that means thousands of people prostrate to him, utmost respect, is putting your head on the ground in front of that person, right? Willingly, without force, without political power or anything. It's just this person respect, worthy of respect, to that level. It's because this person has done the same to everyone millions of times. In Chinese, it's called 欲从千人头里过. 
，需从万人脚足底行。Right. To walk across thousands of prostration means that you walk under people's feet, literally under people's feet, a million times, ten times. Right? You 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 have the same level of respect, even more to those people. That's why they pay you this much respect. And it's something instinctive; you can just feel it if you are lucky enough to be in presence of this kind of people. It's um um. It's the power of education, basically, <clears throat> it, it, real education, not just technical or livelihood, but actual human education. How to be a human?、Uh, it starts from family, and the summary is: even though you have wealth, you have authority, you have you know, everything, but you are able to hold on to a frugal lifestyle. Frugal does not mean stinginess. Stingy means that you hold on to the money like you're a slave to the money, without using it. So this money becomes Chinese describe money as water, and if money is like water, if water does not move, it will become、uh, trap in that area,、uh, and it becomes how to say moldy. It will only give rise to un unwholesome stuff. So money has to flow, and people who actually properly thought of the education of morality, ethical or education, karmic education. And if they're lucky enough to encounter Buddha, which is the education of enlightenment, those are all foundationals. They're able to do this without、um, any trouble. You know, they're able to because、uh, they were trained from young、uh, to be like that. For us, is we need to be、um, sharing these kind of words to other people who are、uh, never heard of this. You know, who never heard of this kind of、uh, lifestyle. You know, even though you're in wealth, in in great authority, position of power, you must always be restrained and be modest, and always willing to give, be more charitable. Because this money, right? If you, there's a saying, right? If money leaves to your children, and they might fight over it. If money leaves, uh, um, in Chinese, there's a very very wise thing, like,、right? um, if you leave money to your children, but your children are capable, why do they need your money? They are able to create wealth themselves. If you leave books to your children, but they are very wise and smart, why do you need them? Why do they need the books? They are able to earn.、Uh, how does it? They are able to、um, be enlightened easier, or be 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 enlightened to to the wisdom of life e- even better. What you need to leave behind is a legacy, a a character. Just be a genuine person. Be a truly decent person. And that character will inspire many generations of people, like how Confucius inspired his own generations of descendants, right? And how Mr. Fan inspired all the way from Song Dynasty to modern times. I'm the descendant of uh, Song, uh, uh, Mr. Fan. I'm the descendant of Confucius. That alone already gives you that brand. You need to get, you need to have that level of standard. It's like a brand recognition, right? In modern corporate world, you still need to have a good brand in order to sell. Why? Because people trust you. Trust is actually the foundation of wealth, and trust cannot come without character, good character, right? Wealth is like fruits, and we need wealth, and we should have、uh, right pursuit of wealth. Jun's eye tai chi is your dog. It's there's nothing wrong getting wealth. The thing is, do not get used by the wealth. You are the master of the well means that you're able to use the well to actually serve people, not just your own,、uh, not just and、uh, how to say filling in the endless hole of your、um, desires because desire has no end. It will become more and more and more until it explodes. The only way to use wealth is actually distribute it properly of your own accord,、All、right? And that's how one character was built up. This is a this is a everlasting. Recipe for real success. I'm not talking about oh, this year this guy is a man of the year, and then next day there's some scandals. I'm talking about real, long-lasting success, lasting generations, right? Long-lasting success that can pass through th-、uh, hundreds of years. That's the, the kind of outlook we should have.、Right. <clears throat> All right, that's it.、Uh, that's it for today. Uh. Ten minutes.
Hi, Jane. Sorry I didn't see you there. I only have one screen today. How are you? Hello. Good. Hey, mate. Good. Oh, anyone have anything to share? Because um, today we're just um, going through everything we are uh, learning and adding two more phrases of this. I hope it's clear. Uh, any questions about you know the phrases we have learned or Buddhism in general or you know, any other stuff? All right, thank you so much, everyone. Let's uh, finish our session by ten times Amitofo. Sorry, I didn't turn off this. All right, let's do this. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion, and leave the teaching for the rest of this life, and be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. Amitabha.